working live. Winning cures everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. What's up? What's up? It is college football week one preview. This is winning cures recap, everything. I'm recap, Gary. Recap. <laughs> recap. <laughs> you want to start over? No, no, we're good. Let's just roll through it. <laughs> we're it's it's Labor Day. We're just trying to get through the day. I, I see how this is uh, how this is rolling now. Um, you can follow us over at winningcureseverything.com. You can go over to the YouTube, hit subscribe there. Uh, if you still want to, after how bad my picks were over the weekend, because holy crap, that was uh, that was about as bad as it gets. Chris, you ended up what three and four after last night's game? Yeah, and I'm I'm two and six right now. So it, this happens every year. This is our fourth year of covering college football, we're and doing I start this completely out, different though. We're I, doing it completely different. I I mean I picked two dogs, big dogs. For money line bets, at, at as two of those four that I lost. So yeah, no, that's that's true. You're not going to hit many of those. But even still, you you only wagered a little bit of money on it, and that's okay. Like for me, I wagered basically the same amount of money on everything, oh, and yeah. lost six. So, <laughs> but it tough. happens every year because I always go in the hole week one. Like it's, I think I know something about these teams, and I don't. Uh, you know who does know something about these teams? That would be Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They've got six incredible sports books. You can find more information about them over at tunicatravel.com. You can follow us on Twitter at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, at Chris B. Giannini. You can follow us, like I said, on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify. Whatever your favorite podcast app is, hit subscribe, leave a nice review. If you're in YouTube, uh, leave some comments. We are rocking and rolling through the college football week one recap. Chris, let's start off with Auburn 27, Oregon 21, the legend of Bo Nix. My guy, Bo Nix. Never started a college football game before. Wasn't going to be worth a damn. No, man, he's five-star. This kid's highly recruited. He knows what he's doing. Yeah, he uh now we'll say this. He played like uh like straight garbage for a good portion of that game. Like he it was not like a, he played like a true freshman. Yeah, he he most certainly did. And Oregon as as our good buddy, what was uh Dennis Green, is that it? They let him off the hook. Oregon was going to be up 28 to 3. And and at that point the game would have been done. What was this 21 to 6 like with just a couple of minutes left in the third quarter? Which is not much, I understand that, but I was about to say, I mean, that's two scores. But they were driving to go up twenty eight to three and what was it, a fumble, an interception? I can't even remember what the play was. Yeah. But it's um, drove me insane. There but the were fumbles so are many... gonna happen. Listen, it was all a matter of time before Auburn's Auburn's defense got a couple of turnovers. This is a good team. This is a yeah. really good defense. This it, it, but it feels like this is what Oregon does, right? Like at some point it just becomes who you are, and and when they happen, uh, we're, like we're just it, gonna we're gonna disagree. We're just gonna keep disagreeing here, Gary. When it happened, to I Oregon think Auburn last is year, really good, and I think Stanford. they take the ball away. I don't think the other team just gives them stuff. Did you, okay the Stanford game last year that they were up what thirty one to seven, and ended up losing thirty eight to thirty one. Like Oregon Stanford last year was this game. And it's the same thing. I understand that Auburn's a a pretty good football team, but Oregon had their chances to put this game away, and absolutely didn't take them, didn't do it. So, it cheers to Auburn for finding a way to come back, especially on a day when the SEC was as dreadful as they were. And we'll get to that here in just a minute. But man, was there anybody that really? I won't say surprised. Anybody that impressed you from this uh, from this Oregon Auburn game? Oh, from this game, yeah, Bo Nix and the and the in the in the defense. I'm telling you, man, that defensive front is really good. This Oregon team is gonna be good. They're gonna put up points on everybody, and they didn't put up points on Auburn. They scored 21, and that's yeah. it, man. That's tough. I'm telling you, that'll be the lowest scoring game they have all year. 
that's a really good offense against a really good defense. And, and I thought the defensive front hung with them. I thought secondary made good plays. I, I think they're a really good team. I, I'm not. I'm not getting off of them right now. I thought they could win ten games this year. A lot of people in the comments of, of our game thought it was ridiculous. And, 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 man, I'm not getting off that train yet. I'm just not. Nobody else in the SEC that they played scares me to a yeah. point that they, they – yeah, they're going to win – they're going to lose a couple, but they're not just going to walk into all these stadiums and, and just get beat by everybody. It's not well, that. And, and then Georgia kind of looked eh against Vanderbilt. Alabama, eh against Duke, right? Like it, yep. it, those two at the end of the season – don't look as treacherous as they maybe did before the season. And There's only one SEC team that played a high school team that kicked the shit out of them. Yeah, that would be your LSU Tigers. That's it. That's the, the rest. And and listen, that doesn't matter. You know how I feel about these games. I watched zero seconds of that game. I refuse. I refuse to give any credence to big teams bringing in little teams just to beat the hell out of them. It's just not something I'm yeah. for. I don't give it. I don't give it my viewership. I don't watch it. It, it, it. We didn't learn anything about any of them. I don't know, man. Like at, at LSU, so I went back and watched it again on Sunday because I didn't really. I wasn't paying attention to it. I had it on one of the screens on on Saturday night, but I wasn't paying full attention. And LSU just before we get into the the disasters. With a passing offense, like they they look like they have finally got something in place, and you don't want to jinx it too early. But like this Georgia Southern team was really good last year. They brought back a lot of guys, uh, not a ton on defense, but you know at least on offense they had plenty of weapons, and they could do nothing. No, but with with Dave Aranda and the defensive talent, that that's just. New year, new season. Let's go. That that you know that that's just going to be LSU football from now until the end of time. Um, so that that doesn't surprise me that we took a team that was that was far less talented than us and held them to nothing. That, that doesn't yeah. shock me at all. And and the scoring, man. Look, maybe Georgia Georgia Southern is not good. Maybe they're just maybe they're just not good at football. And and this offense is what it is. And maybe LSU's offense is great, and it's the best offense that we've seen in 20 years. That might be true also. You didn't learn about it Saturday. That's, yeah. that's all I'm saying. We'll, we'll find out next Saturday. When they no, play Texas, right about that. we'll find out who they really are. Is that defense really that great? Is that offense going to be that explosive and that unstoppable? We'll find out when they line up against a bigger school with a bigger budget and a better recruiting class and, quote, unquote, a better coach and better facility. We'll find out then. Yeah, no, you're right. Now let's talk about uh, that. These teams that that hope that this was not a sign of things to come uh, for the future. One of these schools we're about to talk about, I actually have. I, I think it was a. I think it was a very good day for them, even though they came over with an L. A good okay. Let's let's go through the SEC non-conference disasters. Okay, Memphis fifteen, Ole Miss ten, and we'll this is we'll it. talk on that one here in a second. North Carolina 24, South Carolina 20. This was an utter disaster. This was a hurricane. This was uh, everything that could go wrong uh, for a season. You just watched it go down a toilet bowl. Uh, Georgia State 38, Tennessee 30. It Just copy exactly what I just said and put it over here with them. Wyoming 37, Missouri 31. Um now let's let's talk about the ones that did win games and then we'll come back. We'll rehash this, okay? Okay. Arkansas twenty, Portland State thirteen. Arkansas almost <laughs> lost this football game. They were forty six point favorites. Whew. Okay. Mississippi State thirty eight. Louisiana twenty eight. We'll we'll call them Louisiana. Kentucky thirty eight. Toledo twenty four. That was totally reasonable. Georgia thirty. Vandy six. Uh, Alabama forty two. Duke three. So forth and so on, right? Uh, let's talk about first off, Memphis Ole Miss. You and I both watched this game. Yep. I think Ole Miss had a fairly decent showing in this ball game. I did too. So I, I, I watched it with Ole Miss people, and and they were following other Ole Miss people on Twitter, and they were all talking about how this was a disaster and this and another. I saw this game completely different. 
I I think a, well, Memphis is a good football nobody team. nobody else the rest of the year is going to hold Memphis to 15 points. That's not yeah. happening. This is a really good Memphis offense that you just went down. Your defense looked way better, far better than I I expected Ole Miss's defense to look week one. All right, Mike McIntyre, real coach, real. Co- I told you this is the one school I have no idea how this is going to all work out for them. Yeah. McIntyre seems to be pretty good. Seems to seems to be working out pretty well. I think those guys can play. I don't think they have talent. I think they are going to struggle uh, when they get into some SEC play and the receivers get bigger and not just fast. Um, but but they well, can their, play. Their biggest problem right now is the offensive line. Okay, right? so and they showed. The, they so let's showed get to better. the offensive side. Yeah. The first half, a complete disaster, and that might be the worst offensive line I watched all day. But the fact that Rich Rod was able to take an offensive line that was that much garbage and make adjustments in the second half, they didn't score a lot of points, but they were moving the football. Yeah. They were get, they were getting some plays, and it wasn't just big bus plays. They put together a couple of big drives. They didn't all end in points, but it was just – I saw incredible improvement as the game went on. And I said, you know, I, I'm telling you, I thought y'all were going to lose this game. You did lose this game. That's the best loss I think you could have all year. And and with that offensive line, it's going to be really hard to beat anybody in conference because the defensive linemen you're going to play, even against the bad teams, Vanderbilt and Arkansas, are going to be better probably than Memphis's defensive lines. Yeah. But, but the the – the deal is, is your offense improved. Rich Rod found a way to scheme up plays, even though he just he just took the screen and said, "We can't block them. Let them by. Just let them through, and we'll 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 just find screen plays to get yards." Yeah, get the ball the, out quick. Yeah, I think they'll figure that thing out. I think with a good defense and 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 the creative play calling, I don't think it's going to be a complete disaster. I think they could still peel off five wins in this season. And I think that would be a miracle. I think that would be a, a, if I was a, if I was a fan, an Ole Miss fan, and we, they finished with five wins, I'd be ecstatic. Uh, yeah, no, I I agree with that. Uh, on the other side, just shortly, Memphis's defense did look very improved. Oh yeah, uh, that hiring in Adam Fuller from uh, from Marshall. It you know, was he, crazy that all four coordinators yeah. on this team are all new guys. Yeah, this was game one for all four of them. Yeah, it was it was. Pretty incredible. So, of course, we had no idea what to expect. The over-under was 67. We got a total of 25 points scored in the game. Makes right. perfect sense for week one of college football. That's right. Um, <laughs> next up was North Carolina 24, South Carolina 20. They gave up uh, – South Carolina was up 20 to 9 and gave up 15 unanswered in the fourth quarter. Jake Bentley looked like a deer in headlights. This was, uh, this is an unmitigated disaster for Will Muschamp. I, 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 if Mac Brown is turning around North Carolina that quickly, I'm just I'm just wrong, and everything I know and believe about football is wrong. Yeah, I just I don't understand what could possibly like it. it we all heard the talk in the off season that was coming from Columbia, South Carolina. Which, you know, best team he's had since he's been here. He feels good about the depth. They got their quarterback. They got their – and this wasn't just the quarterback's problem. This was – No, this isn't just on Bentley. No, this was everybody. Like, this was a entire team that just felt like they completely collapsed. You know, this schedule is brutal. And you could not afford a loss in week one, at, even to an ACC team. I mean, it's an, I know it's a non-conference game, but man, like it, that is three straight ACC losses for South Carolina. They lost to Clemson at the end of last season. They lost what twenty-eight to nothing to Virginia in the bowl game. In the bowl game, and, yeah. And then, of course, after that, now they follow it up with a loss to a. Two and nine last year, North Carolina team. No, nobody's going to fault you for the Clemson loss, and no. the Virginia loss was bad because you just you you showed you up with no points up. Yeah. yeah, but but this this is different. That you're the better team. The, the reason I brought up that uh, three ACC losses for South Carolina in the last three games 
uh, it's because Clemson only has two ACC losses in the last four years. So, <laughs> and of course, I'll bring that up because they are rivals, right? Yeah. The, well, the, it's hard to say. Yes, they are rivals. Yes, they are in-state rivals. But that's that's about as far as it goes. Yes, that's a that's a that's a really hard way of saying they're rivals. That I don't. I, I mean, don't if, if LSU played Tulane and that was their rival, that would be like saying, "Yeah, we're rivals." No, we're, no, but this we both is play in the same state. And we both compete for the same kids, but we're completely different level programs. The uh, yeah, but it was six, seven has, years ago when they were not completely different level no, programs. Nope. They were they were absolutely completely different levels. Clemson has always been bigger, far more money put in their program than South Carolina's put in. Okay, I what, agree what with that. Had, but what they had was a head coach that was just superior at at beating people he disliked. Okay. Yeah. All what you can say what you want about Steve Spurrier. Steve Spurrier did not lose to coaches he disliked. He now, just right about that. he lost a lot of games throughout his career. He well, and he won more than he lost, but when he went up against Phil, he didn't like Phil. He didn't lose to Phil. When yeah. he went up against Dabo, he didn't like Dabo. He didn't lose to Dabo. Okay, he just he just had a knack for beating. Him. He, he he didn't like Mark Rick, and he, he didn't lose to Mark Rick. Okay, yeah, he, yeah that's the point. He just had a way about him. But if you take out just what Spurrier has done over the life of this program, they're they're not on the same planet. No, you're right. Wrong. You're right. You've got that a would valid be like point. if Alabama's biggest rival was Vanderbilt, or or like you know, it's just not. I wouldn't go. Mo- I wouldn't go that far. But I, I see. I see where you're coming from. I don't know, man. I'm going to bet Vanderbilt brings in more money than South Carolina. Oh, I highly doubt that. Not their Vanderbilt. athletic program. Vanderbilt's a rich school. Uh, yeah, South but Carolina's that rich money rich goes school. back into academics more so than athletics. Like it's a big difference. <laughs> I don't I don't I don't I don't I don't know that I agree with that. I think all those rich pe- people that were academics there, they don't give back to make sure that that the new doctors have the best facilities. They they give back to make sure that the football program, the basketball program, the baseball program win. Mm. Because they wear their uniform. I I don't know, man. We we may have to look that up. We'll just have to see what what's going on with that. South Carolina, I would put at one of the poorest schools in the SEC. I don't think that I agree with that. But we'll look up the numbers. I could be wrong. Like, South Carolina has a rabid fan base, man. I mean, they are. But that's that's irrelevant. That's irrelevant. I'm not not discrediting their fan base. I'm one of them. I love South Carolina. But but they're just not a rich school. But I don't know. I think all these schools in the SEC right now are pretty rich. But – like I think South Carolina's got some some major we're, alums. We're like gonna I, we're gonna we're gonna disagree there, and that's that's fine. That's fine. We'll we'll actually look up the numbers and figure this out because I I feel like I feel like maybe we're underselling them just a touch, just a touch. Okay. Um, all right. So North Carolina twenty four, South Carolina twenty. That was a disaster. That uh, it may be difficult to come back from that. Georgia State thirty eight, Tennessee thirty. And it should have been worse because Tennessee scored with two seconds left in the ball game to make it a one-score game. I thought Jeremy Pruitt was a good coach. I don't know what happened. He, here's here's what I think. I think Pruitt, and here's the deal: is he's probably he could be a good coach. A lot of people have reported out, and they've lost guys because of just how difficult he is to work with. Yeah, and 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 all this stuff, and that's that's bitten Saban in the in the butt a lot, you know, losing guys and people not wanting to to work for you. I also think it hurts you losing kids and in keeping kids involved in game. They quit on this game; they absolutely quit. And there's only so many times you can just have somebody chewing you out and yelling and screaming in your face before you realize that's that's not going to make me better, man. So yeah. you got to figure out something else. Their lines were really. Really bad. That's the other game that I went back and watched I was, yesterday. I was shocked yeah. that they got beat up front. I, I, I just couldn't believe. Sean Elliott, uh, the head coach for Georgia State, said that he knew, like at the, by body language and everything else, after that first drive, that first touchdown drive, and I saw what he was talking about when I went back and watched it. Yeah. You see heads yeah. drop. You see... Like 
the Tennessee players don't get mad. They don't get, you know, fired up or anything. They just, you know, put their head down and walk back. Like, they're just walking around. It's just kind of whatever. Did you see the crowd in the yeah. second half of this game? Now, before Georgia State even scored, like, to take the first lead, it was putrid. There was nobody in those stands. And that's where it's going to bite him. I mean, it, it, this is – this is next level stuff. I know he's only in year two. Why but would anybody base... stay for that? If if you went through what you went through last year, and then you show up this year and say, you know what, we've made all these changes. He's brought in all these guys, and he's going to be seventeen different. to fourteen at the half. I mean, they're not. And here's the deal: because they've had the Lane situation, and because they've had the Butch Jones situation, and because they've had, you know, the, the other guys that have come through there and have just been a disaster, and they give them four or five years. I, I'm done giving four or five years. Yeah. It's a, you know, I tell you this all the time. As soon as you know you got to lose a hand, you fold it. I don't I don't care what the buyout is because this is not a poor school in the SEC. This is a very rich school. Very, very rich school in the SEC. I, I would strike this guy a check tomorrow and say, hit the bricks. Hit the bricks. I mean, I think I'd probably give him the rest of the season. <laughs> And I don't know. You're not going to be able I mean, to find somebody. You're right. you're Maybe you're right. Maybe you're right. Maybe you give him the rest of the season. And tell yeah. him if if it's not drastic, you have to have a win that is equally as impressive as that loss was. Which there's only two of those oh, teams on the schedule. That's yeah. But but that's it. That's it. <laughs> if you don't win one of those two games, you didn't equal out this loss. At the end of the year, you're packing, baby. Yeah, I think I think that's a, a fair assessment. You know, I I am all for giving coaches time, but I am also of the opinion that okay, you you get your kinks out in year one, right? Like that's that's when you can afford losses like this. That's when things like this happen. By year two, this this motor is supposed to be humming a little Here's bit. Here's the deal: there's a there's a difference between giving coaches time and then realizing we've made a mistake that that's different yes tennessee is going to take some time to rebuild when we pay for wins we we cannot be a program so bad that we can't win the pay for wins that that cannot happen not yeah. during a rebuild it can't happen yeah no you're right you're 100 percent right who uh my, let's let's move on from that because that's just that's bad uh, Wyoming 37, Missouri 31. So one of the bets that I made this weekend was Wyoming team total under 20. And I'll explain why I made that, that bet. Craig Bowl has been at Wyoming since 2014. In that time, he has played eight Power 5 teams, and that now nine with Missouri, but he had played eight Power 5 teams. That included... You know, Oregon and Nebraska, like bad Nebraska, right? That's right. It, like, it, it, there's there's been whatever. He has never scored more than 19 in a game against a Power 5 team. They were 0-8 against straight up. Defenses. Yeah, they were 0-8 straight up, 0-8 against the spread. And I thought there was no way, even in Laramie, that they were going to be able to beat Missouri – and this is this is pretty bad news for Barry Odom, I think. Am I am I wrong on this? I feel so much better about my Missouri under bet. God, I just I just feel like I can cash that ticket tomorrow. They should just <laughs> let me be able to cash it tomorrow. Hey, you know what's crazy is Kelly Bryant, um I mean he had like some insane stats in this game. And they weren't able to do anything with it. Like it, it he had what four hundred and twenty some odd yards passing, you yeah. know, several touchdowns. Yeah, num- yeah, he had numbers. But, but they also had a bunch of turnovers, and their defense couldn't stop anybody. And I swear to you, like reading up on these guys, I thought that this was going to be a really good team. The only person that they really lost off of last year's team was was Drew Locke. They were bringing so many players back. 
and they just we learned week one returning experience means does nothing. not matter means nothing every preview we did we previewed all 100 like 28 teams and every one of them i told you you named out how many people were coming back and i was like this is a different team it's a different team yeah it's, New Year's, it's a different team all those guys from last year didn't matter. Listen, I got a lot wrong. Listen, I, I will I will live by that philosophy until I'm proven wrong. What was the what was the tweet? Um, there was a tweet last night. I'm sure that you saw it. The the teams that had the most returning experience yeah. were like ten and twenty against the spread, and teams that only brought back like less than twelve starters. Uh, Actually went like twelve nine and one against the spread, like it, it was it was something crazy. But I'm fairly certain that's what it was. It was like ten and twenty against the spread for returning experience, and da, da, yep, da, da. teams with fifteen or more returning starters went ten and twenty against the spread. There teams with ten or fewer returning starters actually went twelve nine and one. There you go. So yeah. That kind of changed the uh, the narrative a little bit. Uh, Brad maybe Powers tweet that out. Maybe Just the people. Let's score. see. Da, 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 da. I was looking for the Kelly Bryant box score while we're while we're doing this. Um, here we go. Kelly Bryant, thirty one out of forty eight, one pick, one fumble, two touchdowns, four hundred twenty three yards, and he also had eleven rushes for twenty yards and a fumble, and so. Yeah, Kelly Bryant, uh, Missouri. Tell me your thoughts on this. What? Uh, where does Missouri go from here? Mm. Like, is this a is this a Barry Odom problem or Four is eight, this five and seven? That's where I thought they were going to go to begin with. Yeah, I mean, I I had them at I, nine I and three. Win this one as one of their wins. Yeah. So. That, I mean, no. this is I, here's the thing. The only saving grace they have is is I thought they were going to lose a lot of games in the SEC. And, and and I don't think they are because this is a coin flip team. I mean, if Pruitt's got any pride in him whatsoever, he figures something out, got to be able to beat Missouri. Missouri, you got to be able to beat Tennessee. The way they're looking, whoever loses that game, that's a bad deal. Okay. South Carolina, they're in the same boat. All of these coaches, now at least South Carolina lost to a power five school. Yeah. That that maybe Mac Brown is is magic and I just didn't believe it. And, and, and I'm just going to be wrong on that. But – if if we see that North Carolina is who we thought they were, and South Carolina is bad, then yeah, there there are, there are four schools in the SEC East right now that have to look at one another and say, "I got to beat that guy, or I'm gone." I got to beat that guy, or I'm gone. Yeah, no, you're you're right, you're right. Uh, let's move on from the SEC. Okay, Boise State thirty six, Florida State thirty one. Willie Taggart, you put him in that boat too. Problem is, yeah. he didn't play in the SEC East. <laughs> and, and now he was thing. playing Can I against South Carolina. Yeah, he was playing against a pretty good, pretty good football team. Like we yeah, didn't know played, what to he expect from Boise. Against the best team out of those four SEC teams. Yeah, but I think Boise's probably better than Memphis. all of those teams. Probably better than North Carolina. Yep. Yeah, no, no, probably too. Boise's better than all those teams. Yeah. Yeah, I may not be the biggest Brian Harson fan, but they do have a good football team, and they showed it in the trenches. Uh, let's see, Boise scored on a seven-play, sixty-nine-yard drive to make the score thirty-one to twenty-six. The FSU defense was completely gassed, Done. and Kendall Bryles came out and threw two deep passes and got sacked. And the defense was right yep. back out on the field again. That's like right. that's what you get with with some of these coordinators, right? And that's always been Browse's thing. Like I'm just going to call the game however I see fit. I ain't trying to defend your side of the ball. I'm trying to score points. If we score enough points, we you win. Have, we yeah. have to look at the game. You you can't just. This is what always frustrates me the most. Is it seems to work out well. When, when you've got a ton of talent and everybody does their job and it's fine, but but when things go off the rail, you can't have the offense just run the offense and doing whatever they want and the defense just run a defense and doing whatever they want. Yeah. At some point in time, somebody's got to say, we have to see the big picture. We have to have a game plan that matches 
what one is struggling with. If we get out here, we can't run the ball, and we're going three and out, and this, that, and another, then we have to call defenses totally different than we normally do. And oh, the yeah. offense has to call the offense totally different than we would normally do it. There has to be adjustments. And it's what frustrates me the most when these coaches say, well, I have my style. Well, then you're not a great coach because you can only coach if I give you these parameters in these situations. That's the only time you've ever been successful. Well, that doesn't mean you're great. Yeah. No, you're right. You are right. And I um, think Willie Taggart's got a problem. Yeah. No, he he most certainly does because it did not seem like they were on the same page at all, like the rest of the coaching staff. So that is – I will let, – let's let's look at the positive side, though, which is the, right. the Boise side, right? All right, yeah, so, we'll go with that. Um, Florida State was up 21-3 to in the first quarter, up 31-19 to at the half, did not score a single point in the second half. The Broncos – ran 108 plays. Their true freshman quarterback, Hank Bachmeyer, 30 out of 51, 407 yards, one touchdown, one interception. Uh, Robert Mahoney, 24 carries, 142 yards for a 5.9 average with two touchdowns. George Halani, 14 carries, 70 yards, 5.0 average. Like, they ran all over, and it, it, I, I found it funny because there were guys on Twitter like, "Up, oh, here's here's Boise State with uh, this gimmicky group of five offense yeah. where they just run it down your throat." <laughs> yep, just run it right down there. And and I, I was worried about plays. The heat. I was worried about the heat and humidity, and Boise seemed to handle it fine. Yes. Florida State, they were gassed. Man, they were sucking wind. They were trying to find oxygen where they get it. That's it. That's what's so nuts, right? They were the way you better condition here. team. Yeah. And yeah, it wasn't, wasn't close. Is, is that is that a coaching thing? Is that a well, just – Oh, conditioning, conditioning is a 100% coaching. Conditioning is who actually puts priority and time into it. Listen, they've made it to where you can't hit very much. If you can't hit, you damn well better be in shape. Oh, yeah. You better be able to go all day long because we're not practicing things that we need to practice, and so we just have to assume we got to be out there all day. Yeah, yeah. It, it was, it was rough stuff. Rough stuff. Let's talk about a bad beat. Oh, oh, I want to throw up. No, I had some bad beats anyway. I mean, I had oh. Memphis minus five and a half and the over. I lost it by half a point. Uh, this one. Stanford Cardinals 17, the Northwestern Wildcats 7. I feel like they would have won the ball game had they had in Hunter Johnson. And that ain't saying much because it's not like his numbers were very good anyway. But he looked like he had a better grasp of that team going down the stretch, even with the insane, like it was 10 to 7. With 30 seconds left in the game, Northwestern gets the ball back. All we, need are a couple in the of, bag. we need a couple of deep passes. And we, couple, we've already got the six and a half covered. Even if you get an interception or you turn the ball over, they're just going to kneel it and kill the game because they've got, they're out of timeouts. Instead, There's get, no possible way to lose this game. Th- so this then, was, then I see the fumble. So then yeah. I see the fumble and I think, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. And then I see, okay, Northwestern's got a big offensive lineman. Offensive has been garbage all day. But he just fell on that ball. I'll take the safety. I still cover. Yeah. Safety still covers because I lose by five. I got him at six, six and a half. But it doesn't matter. All right. So so safety's in the bag. Offensive line falls on it. Ball slips right out of his hands. The worthless ass offensive line. Just <laughs> trash garbage offensive line all day. Can't even fall on a football. They uh that offensive line. I, I expected I could have I could have won one game and been in the black. Oh yeah, oh yeah. No, I'm, I'm I'm talking about personally on our picks. I, I don't know if I'd have broken even or not where mm, I was, but I don't know. But, yeah, I mean, you had 150 dollars in our but, picks but, on but, Northwest, but in, but in real life, I could have won one game and lost the rest, spending the block. Yeah, and that it was it. That, that yeah. was it. I so, was yeah. I was I was sick. That was about as bad as it gets. That offensive line was not good. Nope. Now, I expect them to get better because that, that's been Northwestern's problem. 
But man, it made me feel a little questionable about I my do, Northwestern like, over six and a half pick. I don't know. I'm good on that. I do feel like I left that game. I understand this team. I very much understand this team. I, I think there is a chance. There is a world in which this team just knows how to beat Big Ten teams. I, good you know what? Yes. Yeah. They, they play seven of them. So, well, they play, I, I they think, play eight of them. Well, yeah, but they only got to win seven for me to cover. But I think there's a world in which the Big Ten still does not I, – I talked myself into this last night or, or Saturday night. I'm just, just seeing stars and trying to figure out how, how I get out of this. And my thought was is this could be exactly like last year when they just lose every non-conference game. They're going to go play UNLV next week and or the week after. They get a bye week after week one. Ridiculous. But they're, they're going to play UNLV next, uh, the next time they play football. They, they might lose that game. They might lose that game. That's okay. They're going to play Iowa. They're going to beat Iowa. Because Iowa still looks at them like the little brother, doesn't respect them, and Wisconsin's the same thing, and Nebraska's the same way. Nobody respects them. They're the, they're the smart kid school that, that doesn't really take football serious. And yeah. they're, built, they're built to beat those schools. They're built to beat those schools. So probably went undefeated in the Big Ten last year. Yeah. The season. Yeah. I, I talked myself into my my overbet is still good. It, it, yeah, it sounds like you have uh, done some soul searching, <laughs> discussed it, discussed it amongst yourself. I see. If they lose to UNLV, I'm gonna I'm gonna be furious. Let's let's bring up Syracuse twenty four Liberty nothing. Um, two offensive minded coaches, and Liberty was really good last year. Like they scored some some major points last year. Bring in offensive guru Hugh Freeze, who I get it was coaching from a hospital bed in the. I wish I'd have known about this. I have no idea how. I never knew that he was sick all week. Didn't coach all week. Called the game from the hospital bed. I'd I'd have bet the house on on, on Syracuse. I don't care. Well, I, I mean, care. the Syracuse line did keep going up, but I I, I thought care. even even with Hugh Freeze having issues and whatever else. I they should still be able to score. They've got a ton of experienced guys like that you don't when it comes to game day, you don't necessarily need your head coach there. You've got your coordinators well, the that is understand the, head the coach game wasn't there all week either. That, no, well he hadn't been there for like 2 weeks of the, or the last that, that, 2 that's three what weeks I'm saying. Camp, he but. he's not around getting them ready. I understand when, that. when when I, the when day's away the other people, they just don't – people under you, being the guy that that, that has been in management and, and, and owns his own business and all that stuff, nobody takes the care that you you take in your business. Nobody. Yeah. Nobody has the detail and, and gives the attention to the things that you're going to give the attention to when it's your job. I promise you. They, they just don't. And especially if they're at the liberty level. Now, they might in the SEC where the coordinators are still making, you know, million dollar paychecks and so th they're held to a little bit of a different standard these guys not that okay they're just not no, i assure right. you they don't take the care and time and you're talking for the last two weeks two and a half weeks the only people they've seen are these other assistants and not you that that just affects this that affects us a lot i, I would have found i would have found liberty's Team total. I don't know what it would have been. I would have went under that. Um, I had no idea he was MIA that long. No clue. It was 24 to nothing. Syracuse held Liberty to negative four rushing yards. This was domination. I also think Syracuse is really good, though. You know how I feel about them. Oh, I, I am looking very forward to Syracuse and Maryland next yes. year. Or next oh, year. Next, next week. Next week. Yeah, that is. That is it, I'm, I've already, I've already written that down. I've got the line ready. I'm, I'm good to go. That's a, locked and loaded. It, it, that line went from, I think it was minus four when it opened, to now it's Syracuse minus two and a half. Minus like it's going down. Half. People love Maryland after that beat down that they put on Howard, seventy nine to nothing. That's like good. just, I'm, 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 I, that's good. I'm real proud of them. Oh I'm, yeah, I'm excited for it. I can't wait. Ohio State forty five, Florida Atlantic twenty one. Everybody's talking about Justin Fields had a day, right? And Ryan Day looked like he was fantastic. I've got a question for you. Okay. Ohio State went up 28 to nothing in the first quarter. Correct. And then got outscored down the stretch 24 to 17. 
And it was on one of the TVs that I was watching, and Ohio State started to look confused, did not look as good on offense for the, the rest of the game. Like that first quarter, they were absolutely banging. And then it's like Florida Atlantic kind of figured a few things out. They started scoring themselves. I mean, there were opportunities for them to really get back in this ball game. What what should people make of this? Like, what should we make of this? Is Florida Atlantic pretty decent, or is Ohio State no. maybe in some trouble? I don't know. Vegas maybe thinks think the Ohio same State's... thing. Like, it, the reason I, I said this. Ohio State's in... Go ahead. Go ahead. I don't know that Ohio State is in trouble. I don't think FAU is good. FAU, FAU is good. I don't think I don't think they're good. I think okay. I think they went up there and 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 I think they got their butt whipped and then they started fighting back and they showed a little bit of life. I can't explain why why Ohio State was able just to they were just couldn't score at the end of the game. Maybe they're throwing in all their backups. Maybe they're letting a lot of guys play and and whatever. I don't I don't know the answer to any of that. I, I know this. They play Cincinnati next week. It's going to be a different game. They're going to play a different kind of team. Yeah. That, that once again, will be far inferior to them in talent. But that will be the only way place that, that Cincinnati is worse than them at. Yeah. But they're going to have fight. And, and if, you, if you monkey around with a team that, that fights you, you're, you're going you're gonna to end up sad at the end of the day. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's a good way of putting that. Uh, since you brought up Cincinnati, Cincy from way back on Thursday night, 24-14 to 14 over UCLA. Now, this isn't so much a conversation about Cincinnati. This is more about UCLA. Does does Chip Kelly suck now? No. Did, did we – is this just more about Cincinnati than UCLA? Yep. Or, and because it was, it's only like, year two. It's only year two for Chip. He's still got a lot of talent. Left. So, but like, we just Tennessee talked about was, this with with uh, no, uh, no, Tennessee. Yeah. Yes, Tennessee got beat by a high school team. Okay, they got beat by a correctional facility. Sorry, and I apologize UCLA, for being disrespectful. But but they didn't pay nine hundred and fifty thousand dollars to go to Cincinnati and get beat. All right. Yeah. They went across the country on a road game, night game. At, you know, in, in in their opponent stadium with a bunch of freshmen and sophomores. Yeah, they got beat with with a really young, inexperienced team. That doesn't surprise me. That doesn't shock me, and that doesn't make me discredit Chip Kelly forever. I think it's going to be a hard road to hoe because his team is young, but but they showed some some life and they showed some good things, and and I think they're going to get better. I also think that since the eighteen they played, hell of a lot better than a lot of the Pac twelve teams are going to play. Yeah. I mean, yeah. just just a lot. You drop Cincinnati in to the Pac-12. Cincinnati is a contender to win the Pac-12. I mean, I that, that's you're probably right. Truth. That's just the truth. Clay Travis said it after Saturday's ball game when all said was said and done. The people need to stop disrespecting. I've been banging this drum forever, and finally, the first national guy I've heard ever give them credit and credence that wasn't affiliated with the conference needs to start giving the American a conference. If we're only going to have power five, see the American like to say it's power six, but if we're only going to have power five, Pac-12 needs to take a hike. They they just need to take a walk. Okay. Cause the Americans better than them for top to finish. They just don't. Yeah. I think think you're probably right. Uh, We've got three more topics to hit really quickly. Um, JT Daniels, since we talked about the Pac-12, USC starting quarterback, Gone. Probably out for the year. It he looks is. like torn ACL. Yeah, torn ACL. Uh, I think he tore his MCL as well, right? I don't like, know that. I know last night it was reported ACL. He's yeah, out for the season. Lot, lots of bad stuff there. They've got Stanford coming up this weekend. Uh, after that, a trip to BYU. Now, the kid that came in behind uh, behind JT Daniels looked pretty good. Finished out the game, got the win. Did not get the cover over Fresno, but. Uh, but yeah, they. I think this could could spell some major problems. This is pretty much the uh, the nail in the coffin for Clay Helton. Would you agree? I think so. Yeah, yeah. All right. Next topic. We won't spend long on that one. Charlie Strong, possibly in trouble. Wisconsin forty nine, <laughs> South Florida nothing. This was in Tampa. They were supposed to have 
you know, the humidity advantage, the it, just everything, right? Like it, they they had every they had them at home. They were the the home double digit underdog that's covered like sixty six percent of the time in opening week, and nothing went right. They got demolished. Now there is a a different level of player that goes to Wisconsin as opposed to goes to South Florida. And you right. could see it in the trenches this entire ball game. The issue here is not just this game though, right? 49 to nothing is embarrassing. But they have now lost after starting last year 7 and 0. They have now lost their last 7 straight by an average of almost 24 points a game. Is there a way to fix this? Down in Tampa. I don't know. I'm curious to see what happens when they get in the league play. Bringing a big boy in like Wisconsin's tough. And and it's so here's here's the problem with playing. Well, now, a team now they gotta Wisconsin. go to Georgia Tech this weekend. <laughs> I know. I know. Here's the problem with playing a team like Wisconsin is when when they have big athletic, freak strong uh, offensive linemen, you they just there's nothing you can do with them. They hold the ball forever. They don't score fast. They go on long drives that take the entire quarter, and and they they just put it in the end zone over and over and over yeah. and over again. And there's nothing you can do about it. When when an offensive line and the running backs are that athletic and that big and strong, that listen, they might be the team in the Big Ten. That says, hold, hold up, guys. Don't let's not forget that we were once the bullies of this conference. Yeah. Now they they've definitely they're definitely that. I was crazy impressed Friday night with that game. That's a, and see, I, I'm trying to figure out if it was impressive or if it's just what you're supposed to do to a bad team, right? Forty nine to nothing's not what you do to a bad team. Forty nine to nothing's what you do to Georgia Southern. Okay. Yeah. That's not what you do to South Florida. A team that's competing, you know, one of the top four or five teams in a conference like the American. We're having two different conversations. Yeah, I mean, it, you it, now you brought up Georgia Southern there, but like Georgia Southern was ten and three last year in the Sun Belt, like a really good team. Um, but I, I, your point still is valid, right? I get what you're saying. All right, let's close out with this. Jalen Hurts last night, whoo, Sunday night football. What did he have? 507 yards, had over 300 passing, over 160 rushing, had six touchdowns. Oklahoma 49, Houston 31. This was – this, you know, and they looked like an Alabama football team because they were missing field goals and the defense looked aggressive. And Jalen Hurts is back there doing what he does and he's running through the line. And then at the end of the day – I'm sure that you saw the press conference. He was just not happy with the way that they played. That's a miserable life. That's a that's a this is what Nick Saban does to you. He just sucks all the fun out of life, the soul just straight from a person. I will tell you this. It did look to me like like Jalen is focused and he wants a national championship. Like he wants to get back to the playoff. So that he can play Alabama. That's kind of what it looked like to me. He's gonna have to be other world. I don't know. That's gonna have to be. He's yeah. He needs he needs help to do that. Because it, it and he was not like what he did was fantastic, right? But you know that Lincoln Riley will put up numbers with anybody. Yes. Like that's that's not a question. They they have to stop people a little better. The defense played great in the first quarter. Really yeah. good. Second well, half. Well, first, first half, really. Well, yeah, and then the second half, half really, yeah, you're right. it kind of I mean, started it's just, to – Dana, Dana Hogerson's a, a really good offensive mind, and he went yeah. into halftime. He made adjustments, and they couldn't stop him. Now, and, there, there were mistakes for Oklahoma, and they will uh, – they'll have to fix them. That's, that's right. it. Because the offenses that they play in the, in the Big 12 are going to be better. You feel oh. really good. He's really good. But Texas has got a quarterback too, you know. Baylor's not going to be some pushover, you know. I, I think TCU and, and and some of these guys are going to be going to be tough outs. Oh yeah, this this coming week, we're going to find out a lot about a whole lot of people, and I cannot wait. 
Texas A and M, Clemson, uh, Texas LSU. Like we are, we're gonna find out a whole lot. I can't wait for it. This is gonna wrap up the week one recap. Uh, visit us back again. What tomorrow night? So it it, it seems so much closer, doesn't it? Like it's <laughs> yeah. Today's Monday. <laughs> it is Monday. Uh, but it's so much closer. We are. Uh, we are ready. I am ready for week two. I got to get out of this hole that I have dug myself in with these gambling picks. But that's okay. I'm feeling good about next week. We can do this. Of course, go over to tunicatravel.com. The show is brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. Uh, you can go over to winningcureseverything.com. Follow us on YouTube. All of those wonderful things. We will be back with you again tomorrow. In the meantime, Chris, enjoy your Labor Day. I will enjoy mine as well. We'll see y'all again tomorrow. Later, man. Thanks for checking out Winning Cure. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.